Welcome back guys, I trust you've been staying safe. Today's true crime story takes us to Durban, South Africa and it's about the drive-by gang shooting murder of the Durban gang boss by name Brandon Puff Kalicharan and his wife and unfortunately his nine-year-old daughter who was turning 10 years on that day she was also murdered with her parents. This is a true crime story that happened in March of 2023 in South Africa and is still yet to be solved technically. If you are ready for this true crime story, just buckle up and let's go. Before we get into today's video, kindly support our campaign against femicide by going to the comment section and just typing say no to femicide or hashtag stop the femicide. We appreciate the support. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and it has come to a realization that most people who watch our videos have not actually subscribed. We need you to subscribe and also leave this comment to support our campaign. Now to the substantive case at hand. I've always been saying that if you want to understand the man or if you want to understand the person, then you have to go to the genesis of that person and then it will give you perspective and insight for you to begin to understand how come the person turned out the way they are or how come the person made the decisions or took the route that the person took. So today, based on what has happened, we are going to look at the life and times of this Deban gang boss by name Brandon Puff Kalicharan and the issues that metamorphosed and escalated to the point where he was gunned down along with his wife and his nine-year-old daughter who had just turned 10 years old on a day that South Africa as a country was actually celebrating Human Rights Day. Now our story starts from how he came up. Now Brandon was a notorious underworld figure in Durban and he ran the 11th street gang. Now this gang was named after the unit in Chatsworth where he's from and he built his drug distribution empire by waging a bloody war on the streets of Chatsworth by taking out his rivals in drive-by shootings. So when this incident happened, my condolences to his family and his loved ones. For, for me personally, I believe that nothing warrants the taking of someone else's life irrespective of what somebody is suspected of being involved in or otherwise. But when this happened, based on this history, there were some people who were actually saying that if you live by the gun, you die by the gun. Well, that is a fact, especially in the drug game. But that doesn't mean that I condone the fact that his life has been taken from him. Now, observers actually said that the key to Brandon's success was based in, on the fact that he was forging ties to street gangs across Durban, including the feared cartel gang in Wentworth. And he was always with his wife. She was always by his side. Her name was Jekunaya Naidu Kalicharan, and she embraced the gangster lifestyle and was known for her expensive taste in clothes and jewelry. Rightly so, because the money was there. Now at 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon in March 2023, as South Africa was observing Human Rights Day, unfortunately, the lives of the Kalicharans, including that of their innocent nine-year-old daughter, would come to an end. This happened on Peters Road in Springfield Park, which is an industrial zone in Durban. And before they knew what was happening, heavily armed gunmen pulled up alongside the family's VW Amarok vehicle and sprayed it with bullets from both sides. More than 50 rounds of high caliber bullets penetrated the car. In this, Brandon and Jekodaya were struck multiple times and died on the scene, unfortunately. It even gets worse because their nine-year-old daughter 
was still alive by the time paramedics arrived and was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately, she also later succumbed to her injuries. This is so pathetic and so, so sad because for me, I think she was innocent, really innocent, irrespective of what her parents might be alleged to have been engaged in. I don't think that any of that, any of that in any way made her complicit. She was a nine year old girl and an innocent one at that. And I don't know what would drive these gunmen to be this sporadic in executing such an act. Not that the act in itself is justified under any circumstance, but to take it to the extent where the life of a nine year old kid will be lost in the mix. It's just crazy. Now, according to investigators, the, the motive of the killing is unknown, although preliminary investigations suggest that the man who was shot was allegedly involved in drugs and gang-related activities in Chatsworth and was also a person of interest in some cases which were being investigated. So now the main question is, who was Brandon Puff Kalicharan? And how did he end up on the radar of the people that allegedly were investigating him and also those who allegedly took his life? Now, through interviews with police sources and going through several court documents, it has become known that Brandon Kalicharan is a man who rose from rags to riches, just like the famous El Chapo and many other criminal enterprise bosses, or let me say alleged criminal enterprise bosses. Brandon grew up in Crossmore in Chatsworth and attended the Crossmead Primary and Crossmore Secondary School. He lost his father at a young age and was raised by his single mother in Universal Place Road, which was considered a nicer part of Chatsworth because it had free standing houses and was away from the tenement flats. So, although they weren't from a rich home, he actually came up from the nicer part of town, where crime was not so prevalent. Kalicharan's entry into the cutthroat world of gangs and drugs began in the early 2000s when he left his job in a clothing factory shop to go work for Kelvin Kelly's Naidu who owned Fat Funk clothing shops in Chatsworth and Phoenix. According to sources, these legitimate shops were mere fronts for a lucrative drug racket. Now, in 2008, Naidu was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting by the Dre Boys gang. Three members of the Dre Boys gang were committed of these murders and were sentenced to life in prison. It was during this period that Kalicharan allegedly began running the Chatsworth underworld. He moved away from the clothing business and opened a tavern from where he plotted his expansion. But the Dre Boys, however, stood in his way, which culminated in a bloody gang war in which several people were killed in drive-by shootings between 2008 and 2011. While suspicions were high, police were unable to pin any of these murders on Kalicharan, rightly so because most gang bosses of today are also smart, they are very intelligent, so the law would even be able to suspect that they are behind some evil doing, but it becomes a problem when you have to get corroborating evidence to pin it on them so it will stick in court. So this guy was smart. Now, after he consolidated his power in Chatsworth, Kalicharan, according to sources, turned his business into a drug wholesale operation instead of just pushing on the streets, where he would sell large quantities of drugs to street gangs across Derba. The popularity of the cheap heroin-based drug known as sugars, brought in tens of thousands of rams every day. 
Kalicharan's social media popped. He would often stitch together videos of his flashy lifestyle, the cars, and the money and the guns. So you could see that he was living the dream. Now, during a birthday celebration, he and his wife styled themselves as a modern day Bonnie and Clyde in a video complete with background music and slow motion effects of them pulling out their guns. He openly posted videos and pictures with leaders of various gangs, including the notorious cartel gang from Wentworth. In one picture, presumably at his birthday party, he celebrates it with a cake of American Dallas while openly flaunting the prison gang code 626. There are also pictures and videos of Kalicharan and cartel gang leader Carl Para Pretorius together at parties. In one video, actually, you will see Kalicharan standing near a DJ box and dancing with his shirt open. Pretorius holds a stack of money while telling the camera that they don't steal money, they make money. And in another video, Pretorius extols the 11th street gang. Pretorius was shot and killed in a gang-related hit on December 15, 2022. Now check the timeline. This would be just over three months before Brandon Kalicharan would also be hit. Now as a new and growing empire, it came to the point that as the empire grew, the bodies also continued to pile up and the KwaZulu Natal anti-gang unit under the organized crime unit began homing in on Kalicharan from around 2022. Because if you become the boss, definitely you are going to become the target of the law. The code is to cut off the head of the snake because it's believed that once that is done, the rest will crumble. So raids were conducted at his home and on train road where he owns three other homes. He was arrested on eight different charges, including drugs, unlicensed firearms, attempted murder, and murder. But unfortunately, the police were unable to make any of these charges stick. I spoke about this earlier. I spoke about this earlier. Gone are the days where drug campaigns and mafia bosses were not so sharp and smart. Now, they actually, or it's alleged some of them actually have legal aids teaching them how to go about their crimes so they can actually avert being implicated in anything that they do. A police source actually said this, that he had a lot of policemen in his pocket, and I'm not surprised that a policeman came to this conclusion that Brandon Kalicharan had a lot of policemen in his pocket. It was an open secret that he was paying off several policemen at Chatsworth Police Station, and so he always managed to stay one step ahead. Similar to that was Pablo Escobar, the famous one. So things would come to a head on this fateful day, where Brandon Kalicharan, along with his wife, Jacuniah, and their nine-year-old daughter who was actually turning 10 years old on this fateful day. It meant that it was a birthday and they stepped out in their vehicle and the rest is history. But I don't know. I, I was wondering how people can be this wicked but then it dawned on me that this is the drug game we are talking about. There is no pity in the drug game. There is no empathy in the drug game. There is no mercy in the drug game. So I think it would be wrong of me to be surprised that some people were this merciless. But I also believe that even in the drug game, there's some form of code where you can't go after people's kids. So I'm surprised that they had to involve her kid to that extent. But unfortunately, that is what happened. And for me, the most disgusting aspect is that even after the drive-by shooting, you will see in the CCTV footage that Kalicharan's vehicle actually veered off the road and crashed. But these hitmen didn't leave it there. They wanted to ensure that the mission was actually fully accomplished. So they came back again 
one of them got down, went to the vehicle and added more bullets just to make sure that the job was done. I think that this was personal and maybe also business because with his caliber in the drug game allegedly, if he was eliminated, then it opens up the way for opportunities for other people. The crime hasn't been solved yet, but there has been another shooting where some people ended up being killed and it's been reported that these people allegedly were responsible for the hit on Brandon Kalicharan and his wife and his daughter. I don't know how true that is or how accurate that is. But so we get any updates on whether it has been fully confirmed, I wish his family and friends condolences and the strength to move on from this. But hey, stay safe out there, especially if you find yourself in such neighborhoods. But always remember that you don't necessarily have to become what your environment seems to be. Keep an eye out and stay safe out there. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet done so. Turn on post notifications. Don't forget to leave the comments in the comment section talking about stopping femicide and also what do you think about this entire case? Do you agree with people who are saying that if you live by the gun, you die by the gun? And to an extent, what do you think about the fact that his daughter got caught in this drive-by? Leave your comments in the comment section and also include anything that maybe I may have left out in case you are very close to this story, maybe you are in South Africa and you know more than what I shared. So we come your way next time. Stay safe out there.